This is the holy grail of vintage motocross, a Honda RC500 owned and ridden by a world champion. Some would say it's priceless, but I know the man that's just bought it. So let's take a closer look at this majestic machine, learn about its story, and find out how on earth it ended up in front of us here today. In this video, the man behind the awesome VMXDN Fox Hill event is going to tell us all about this uber exotic machine. He's also got some big VMXDN news for us as well. And then he'll reveal what sort of price tag a priceless machine like this might have. So be sure to stick around to find out how much a legend like this might cost. Before we get into the history of this beast, I just need to say a big thanks to Pewterline for supporting the channel. We couldn't make videos like this without their support. Pewterline have products to lubricate, clean and protect your bike. And they also have a great feature on their website where you can just type in your bike model into the search bar and you'll be presented with all the products that you need for your ride. Thanks once again to Pewterline for supporting the channel. The year is 1985 and Andre Mulherb is the king of the world. But the three-time and reigning 500cc world champion had his hands full for the 1985 season, with his young teammate, a certain Mr Dave Thorpe, taking the title fight all the way to the final round of the season in Switzerland. The pair lined up in the mud ready to do battle one last time each man riding a priceless factory Honda RC500. Mulherb, the reigning 500 champion and soon to be 1985 vice champion, was ready for war. And although Thorpe would go on to take the title that day, Mulherb would claim one last victory in the final race of the season, riding the very machine that we have before us today. So I'm here with Mr. VMXDN himself, Dave King, with this piece of motocross history. And Dave's gonna tell us all about this bike. So Dave, what is it? Who did it belong to? How old is it? And just how special is this thing right here? Well, it's probably older than you, is it? Oh, uh, about 10 years older yeah, than me, I so, think. Yeah, so, well, it's a 1985, cut long story short, it's a factory Honda. It's Andre Malherbe's 1985, RC500 is the correct term for it, which was a factory Honda. It was a bike you could never buy. You you earned that ride, you know, by, by ability. It was, yeah. and back in that day, Honda only hired people that were going to win world titles. And it's got a number one on it, it's so. Got, it's got number one, on, of course, because Andre won the world title in 1984. Yeah. So he went into the 1985 season carrying the number one plate. And what makes this bike, these RC500 special, and specifically this one we've got, with us today it, it was hand built in japan there would probably been only maybe six complete bikes built and shipped over and then the rest would have been spare parts they would have changed frames engines parts through the year but as as complete bikes as far as i'm aware in motocross trim this is the only 85 that exists which makes it incredibly rare yeah. i would say like the most recognizable thing about this bike is the tank with the, the drop down and the cutout for the kickstart. That, it, nobody else did it. Honda were the first. They realized low center of gravity made sense on a motocross bike. Still to this day, everybody's trying to get low center of gravity. Those big radiator scoops, everything on this bike's handmade. There's nothing on this bike that you could have bought yourself back in the day, bar probably <laughs> handle grips. All of the engine cases made of magnesium, titanium bolts. This bike, Dave, it's got all the original bits. This is how it would have been at the end of the 85 season. What makes it a little bit special is, is if you can see the front fender brace, yeah. any anoraks like myself would know Andre never rode with that front fender brace. That was just, that was a Dave Thorpe thing. Yeah. Dave liked that to keep that mudguard stable and did, you know, it would have, um, you know what a front mudguard's like, it vibrates about and it. And at that level, you don't want anything distracting you. And, and that's why Dave used it. And Dave was very particular. Dave he? was very particular. So roll back to the last GP of 1985 was in Switzerland at Wollen, um, was a muddy race. Now, we all know that Dave lives in, lived, came from England, probably liked a bit of mud. And to be fair, I suspect Andre did as well. Andre 
decided to have his mechanic fit that front fender brace for those last two races, that last GP. So we know that the bike came literally from, 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 GP. from the GP and into storage. The bike's never been touched. It's yeah. not restored. All the internals are still in there. Everything is there as it, as it was you know which is a collector's dream you do not want you, you don't want to find a bike that somebody's rounded off some nuts and bolts you know that's that's a big no-no that is a collector's dream down to the yeah. tires so theoretically if you was brave enough you could start that and ride the exact bike that andre rode, rode at that I final gp i have no doubt that you could clean the carburetor in that bike put fuel in it and with that's a honda within three kicks that would be running but this one is it going to ever going to be ridden or is this going to be a showpiece i suspect probably by vmxdm fox hill time that bike would be running if you look at the radiator here the way look at the attention to detail here the way it's stepped to get the maximum amount of cooling in the space provided. The shock, it's what we used to call like the milk bottle shock because it looked like a milk bottle, but it, it was nothing like a um, production shock. Again, what we used to call the Coke bottle swinging arm because it looks like a Coke bottle. It was just that beautiful hand formed HRC beauty. And what's interesting about this is if you look around the back, you see the lug there. So the year before on the work spikes, they had a disc brake this had the option to run a disc brake as well uh, although so they went from disc brake in 84 to drum brake in 85 and then back to disc brake again in 86. a lot of our viewers are american they're from the states back in 1985 were the americans riding bikes like this they or were they very different they were so i spoke to johnny o'mara in the week showed him a picture of the bike johnny although everybody will know johnny for one, riding a 125 johnny rode on that bike as well david bailey had an identical bike so any americans who know their stuff yeah. that's not a stock cr500 yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know it looks a bit funky but that that was a full-on works bike and at that time in the states i think up till the production rule came in in 87 was it so before then they could ride before works then bikes. it was whatever you can afford to build you ride it and that's what honda produced for america and for for europe, for europe. if this bike could talk it has some amazing oh, stories right in your opinion your educated opinion what do you think the coolest story that this bike could tell would be british gp 1985 when dave thought went down on the first corner farley castle at farley castle dave went from probably having a really good start to dead last and within three or four laps david passed that bike and was in the lead but david used a lot of energy in that race getting to that and andre hunted him down and won the race so uh, that that would be my memory of that bike stuff like this all billet all of the brake levers are billet a beautiful handmade uh torque arm ad totally adjustable all on rose joints again all the plaster side panels or hand formed aluminium subframe which the stock bike had a, uh, a steel one the little tiny little tiny foot pegs they're just yeah, cr crazy for, you know for what those guys did on these bikes what are they inch and a half two inches long they're tiny magnesium triple clamps with adjustable bar positions forward or back both dave and andre were big guys so i guess they liked them at the front factory nissan front brake very different to production one little tiny shorty levers that were very popular i think they still are to this day um, on modern bikes two two radiator caps don't ask me why there's two because i don't know <laughs> but it's got two radiator caps somebody can enlighten you in the in the comments on why why there was two you mentioned it earlier so this bike is going to be at fox hills this year in august it will be it'll be on display there yeah and i'm as i said before i'm sure there will be an opportunity to start the bike again the magnesium engine cases and i don't know if the camera can pick it out can you pick out the markings on there it's quite rough scratched in there that was by uh, marked in there by andre's mechanic and it actually says where that cylinder was used what countries I haven't got my glasses on so I can't read it out, but I know there's France, USA and maybe Italy and Holland on there. So that cylinder did at least four GPs. Handmade, 
gear change for each rider had a choice of gear changes to suit boots and uh, foot size even the sprockets were made by hrc so this bike dave tell us the story of how on earth it ended up here in england today how did this because let's just this isn't your bike it's, is it it's, it's a not my bike, bike no so so a friend of mine collector um i knew he was after some special bikes and i caught wind of where there was a few special ones and we made a few inquiries normally when you ask about bikes the door slams shut bikes this special this rare yeah, but this time everybody has a time for for getting rid of stuff selling stuff and do you think me, because me you think because we lost andre last year that was a an aspect in no, the sale of this no i don't no no that, that's just a sad coincidence um i made a phone call at the beginning of the year um because i knew where the bike was and we got talking uh, and it all seemed possible and myself and the new owner went over um to germany uh, a week ago today and came back with and the it, treasure and yeah. there it is <laughs> yeah yeah so at some stage in this bike's history over the last 30 years our own dave thorpe has been close to it and signed the rad scoop but the bike is not dave's this is this is andre's bike maybe this the scoop got uh, came off of one of Dave's bike I don't know I don't know but this is definitely Andre's bikes uh, bike but with Dave's signature on the side Dave will be a worthy addition to find out if he remembers when he actually signed this bike so that's pretty much a 1985 RC 500 up close and personal we won't go too specific but if you had to put like a price tag on something this rare and this special what are we looking at ballpark I I would honestly put a figure between 150 to 200,000 UK pounds. That's insane. Yeah. Do you think that makes these the most valuable dirt bikes in all De existence? Definitely. The, that, that is definitely the most, most valuable dirt bike on the planet. Without a shadow of a doubt. You've heard it here. And we're sat feet from it. You I touched it earlier. You touch it. I touched yeah. it. It's just a very, very unique um, and, and special bike yeah indeed but to be honest the money side of it is is immaterial it's it's the history it's of the bike yeah it's a priceless yeah. artifact isn't yeah. it of and and history. just a fantastic memory of andre yeah for sure well if you guys want to see this bike up close and personal be sure to head down to fox hill this august what's the date 26th 20... 27th if it's anything like last year it's going to be unreal it was our favorite weekend of the year last year wasn't it dad 100%. Yeah, if you want to see this bike, if you want to see some of the best racing that you're going to see all season long, head down to Fox Hill, but come buy and your, join us. buy your tickets now on Eventbrite because we may have to close the doors on this one. It, it got hectic. It got so <laughs> busy. It, it got yeah. hectic. Join us down there, Fox Hill, 26, 27. Of August. August, bank holiday weekend. As always, my name is Max. I want to say thanks to Dave for showing us this specimen. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you at the track. Mm -hmm.